Hey everyone, in this video, we'll be talking about something I just found out. Um, it's a Visivic editor, as they say. Like, I wouldn't classify it as a Visivic editor, uh, but it's something along those lines. So, I found this out while working on a project recently, and it just blew my mind on how simplistic and modular this is. It is a WYSIWYG editor, a free block style editor with a universal JSON input, they say. I'll talk about what this is in a second. But um, the block style editor is something like this. So each of these um, text elements or a heading or a list is a block. Uh, it's something very similar to if you use Notion, you would see. So if I open my Notion, I have, have my editor JS over here. So each of these is a block so i can add a block of text over here so this is the text i can add a block with a page or a heading which is a heading one all these are separate blocks so this is very similar to that so i can classify it as a notion copy like such uh, so uh we'll talk about what the json output in a second uh and it is open source and it is so modular that you can write your own tools uh which come up over here as well so let's just look at the documentation. Um, if you, uh, I'll in this uh, video, I'll add a, um, I'll talk about some a little bit about how it is used with Next.js, but you can use it with basically any JavaScript framework. Uh, but uh, basically, it is a basic block style rich editor. Uh, the other WYSIWYG editors, if you've used, uh, they use divs and then they set it to content editable and work with those but it causes a lot of issues when you're working with it. Now, what Editor.js does differently is it just consists of separate blocks and each of them is an independent content editable element uh, as they have used over here. The thing with this is, let's talk about clean data in a second, but the thing with this is each of these, uh, the text, the heading, the list, the images, the attachments, all of these are separate plugins. And you can just plug in whatever you need uh, um, separately and that will just uh, make it so much more modular and talk about just, you know, uh, you just use whatever you need. For example, if you just go down over here, they have the tools installation over here and they describe the base concepts where they use header, link embeds, etc. And they just install head, uh, header separately, the list separately and then set, specify those inside tools. Now what this enables you to do is just use whatever you need and not install any other things so and the thing with this is so if i open just the github over here uh you can see the tools which they have but they also have some other tools which are open source and you can just instantiate those tools directly for example inline image carousel uh, latex uh, mermaid block editor uh, etc you can just install these and they will just work so I just got a basic setup with uh, Editor.js working. Uh, so if I just go over here, I have uh, the text, the heading and the table over here. I, I can add the heading, heading one. I can just click on tab and it will open the menu again. I can click on text. Um, let me just fill some lorem ipsum over here. Uh, and the thing is, like I have four paragraphs over here. If I just paste this, it will generate four different blocks. This is very interesting. And if I select something over here, I can look at bolding it, italizing it, or linking it. So I can bold this. I can say link something over here to say. And if I click on this again, it will show me that it has linked. So it works very similar to how Notion works. You can also add the table, uh, like I've added this tool. So I can add the table name, age, something like that. Um, so how this works is basically, um, I'll just go over this code base in a second. Uh, I have this app directory, this is an XJS directory, and I have the editor slash page.tsx over here, which is a server component. Now I'm just uh, having the contain this basic ta tailwind to center the um, editor. And this editor over here is a client component and I'm getting the uh, editor JS, the header and the table dynamically because ESM imports is needed over here. Uh, basically what I'm doing over here is I'm waiting for the window object to be set. This is specific only to next years because it um, by default runs on the server. So you need to wait for the window object to load. Uh, so to make editor.js work. 
So we wait for the window object to load and set is mounted state to true. And whenever is mounted changes, if is mounted is true, then we initialize this. So basically what that is doing is initializing the editor. We're getting editor JS working. Uh, we're instantiating this class and setting this holder. What the holder is, is this div over here has the editor JS holder um, ID. So basically what that is, is if I go back and look at this over here, it's inside this container and look at this div ID. Uh, this is the whole div which is uh, working with the codex editor. So it basically got in, injected all the codex um, editor code uh, inside this. So that is what the holder is for. By default, it editor JS, you don't even need to set this. But look at this, this is the main part. So I am instantiating two tools over here, the header and the table, the text is there by default. I'm getting header and table, I ins uh, installed these before and then got the, this, these two tools working. That is all you need to do to get the heading and the table working. And this makes it so modular, like I said, just use what you need. You, you don't need to even need to install what you don't need. For example, let's add lists over here. So for that, if I go back to the GitHub, you can see that nested list is an item over here. So if I click on that, I can install nested list over here. Or well, let's look at lists. If that is a separate thing, I'm pretty sure there is a list separately. Mm, documentation. Let's look at getting started. <coughs> Tools installation list. Yeah, list is a separate thing. So I can just install this. I'm using PNPM, use NPM, whatever you want. PNPM add this. Uh, that will just take a second or two. And well, these don't have types. So that is, uh, you don't need those specifically, but yeah, it does give me, still, still give me the error that I couldn't find the declaration file. Just ignore it or you can just yes, ignore this block. And over here, all I need to do is set list, list. And look at this now, right? I go to my next JS, I refresh this and see what happens. This is a loader. And if I click on this and click on this, I have the list working now. List item one, list item two, etc. And this is all one block. And what you can do is click on this and you can change this to unordered. These are all the inline tools items that they say. Uh, so you can customize all of these if you're writing your own plugins itself. So you can write your own block tool as well. You can write, um, say a simple image uh, plugin. So you can use a simple image. This already exists. You don't need to write this, but you can write your own plugin, which renders stuff. Uh, you. I'll talk about save in a second. That is a very important thing, but you can write your own plugin. I won't go into too much detail over here, but just showing you how capable uh, editor JS actually is. You can also write inline tools, which is for example, if I select this, well, the text over here, so if I just uh, create a new block over here, the text and hello world. And if I select this, this is the inline tool over here. You can also convert this to a heading or a list like they've said over here. Now it is so cool how this works. Um, now going to the most important part about editor JS. So see this button over here. I have over here after this over here, this is the save button. Uh, why do I have a semicolon? here? Oh yeah, I have a semicolon here. We can remove that. Uh, right. So I have this button over here. Basically, it is calling the save function. The save function is calling the save method on ref.current. Ref.current is this editor, basically. So if I go to this editor, this editor has that um, function here. So basically, you can call the save function. If I go to the documentation on what the save function is, um, where was it? Saving data. So it basically returns the uh, clean data, uh, the promise that results with the clean data, the output data, and this is just our uh, JSON. It returns time uh, when the saving the timestamp, if you need it somewhere inside your um, database, uh, you, the version that or both of these are pretty irrelevant in our case, but look at this blocks, all right? Now the blocks, what that does is each and every block is an object inside this array. So if I just uh, look at this over here. 
I have this alerting uh, the JSON dot string. If I actually let's let's just have that. I had that for a separate reason. But uh, if I just click on this over here, let me just refresh and try this out in a second. Let's have a heading heading for let's add a text. So by default, it is a text. You don't even need to set anything. You can change what the default is later. You can add a table. Like I said, name is contain. Um, if I enter now, keyboard uh, function uh, keyboard support is very good as well. You can actually also, I think, do that. I just did a command B or a control B in case of Windows, and that will work. Keyboard support is brilliant. You can set your own keyboard shortcuts and change those. John um, twenty four, right? Uh, I can have a list. Okay, pretty relevant. I just wanted some items over here to show what this can do. And see, I hit tab and I can actually look at these over here. This is ordered by default. I hit tab again. I can change it to unordered. All these things over here. I can move this up. I can move this down. All these things. Now the relevant part is if I go to my console and clear everything over here, check this out. All right. Should I? zoom in yeah i can zoom in the console thankfully uh now if i click on save look at this all right the article data it has the, the uh, ignore the time and the version it's not needed this is an epoch uh, time but the blocks it has four blocks like we have four blocks over here it gives all of these a separate id again not very relevant look at the type now the type for this is a header the data it has a text and a level I think you can change the heading level. So if I change this to heading one and then click on save again, the, uh, if I look at the blocks again, the first one, the data, uh, well, the level by default is one, so it doesn't give anything. But if I change this to header, heading three, save this blocks, zero data level three. Uh, it has all these customizations over here and you can write your own renderer for this if you want later if you're making something like notion you don't even need a renderer in that case but um, basically have this text it just gives the relevant data to you uh, with headings false uh, i think you can set the headings over here for example uh, add a row below etc uh, with headings if you set that to so this becomes a heading of its own you don't even need to do this in that case i think okay anyways so you can set these two with headings, without headings, etc. Uh, have these B tags over here for the HTML. And the three is the ordered list of style with the items. So you can render these on your own. And this JSON is so um, nice to have. Okay, not sure if you could see all that JSON because my face was in there. But um, hopefully you could uh, see a bit of how that works. Now, you can, uh, in some cases, if you're writing like a WYSIWYG editor, you would ideally want it to be in the case where uh, you can output the data somewhere, right? So for that, I made an output page, output slash page dot ts. So this is, what this is doing is, this is calling this over here. So this is from component slash output dot ts, another use client. I installed something called editor js dash react dash renderer. Again, a dynamic import is needed because this needs to be on the client. And uh, let's see content. Uh, you can style this uh, with the editor output types. That is fine. Um, basically, what I'm doing is having this output over here, setting some custom styles for the paragraph and having a class name for text SM and the data is the content. This is the main part. Now, the data is the content and this content is coming as props. So if I look at the references to this i am passing a content i got from a previous uh, one over here basically what we want to do is let's actually try this out over here. sorry about that if you heard that um so basically what i want to do is let's json dot stringify this so that i can copy this output data let's save that and let's refresh this uh, let's just add a bunch of stuff really quickly. List one, list two. Uh, let's go tab over here. Uh, well, text, text here. Let's just add a table really quickly. 
table let me go the keyboard support is so good which is a very important part of uh, like my workflow like i definitely want keyboard support in my application um okay that's it i'm not going to do too much stuff over here um so now what i'm going to do is click on save and i have this over here i'm going to copy this json right i'm going to copy this json go back to the renderer and i'm passing this content over here so i'll just pass in the content again over here sorry content and then paste that json and i'm going to delete this part basically this has the time the blocks and the version that is relevant irrelevant but i have the blocks over here with the list the paragraph and the table now i go back and go to local post 3000 slash output that there it is it has a list one list two texture and you can write custom renderers for these as well so for example uh, i i was using this with code um the code uh, plugin over here and it didn't have a renderer for code and i just wrote a render for it uh, by myself uh, and it is very simple to write that uh, so basically you can just go uh, which one was this in? Yeah, so you can uh, make these own renderers and you can uh, call the renderers over here uh, and basically this will work. You can custom code render. You need to find out what data is being passed in. The data is basically the data which is coming in here. So if you look at this, the data is this data which is going in over here. So for code, it was something like data.code. I don't remember exactly, but I used that code and wrapped it inside a pre and a code uh, tag and then styled it accordingly. So you can write custom renders if you want. You can write this custom render for list itself to have this uh, as better list, but um, that's just Tailwind doing its thing of uh, removing the li uh, tag, um, the text decoration. List decoration, yeah, something like that. Anyways. So that is it for this video. I, there's a lot more things going on, on around uh, editor.js. You can write your own plugins, like I said, and all these things, but I wouldn't go into too much detail over here because this video was just to introduce you to editor.js. And I hope this was a useful video for you all. And uh, I will be coming up with more videos regularly now and soon. So to look out for more such videos, uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and keep watching. Goodbye.